Our objective today is I will use ratios to calculate the probability of two conditional events occurring at once. Um, so we're doing compound events today and Wednesday, and today's compound events are exclusively with the word and in them. Okay, it's really important. There's two different kinds. Today's is and. So how is this different from what we've been doing? Well, simple events are the probability of one event occurring where compound events, and especially, is the probab probability of more than one event happening together. Okay, and then once we find the probabilities, we multiply them. That's the big thing. When we are doing compound events and, we multiply them together. So, one really quick thing I want to show you that is really cool. If you are struggling with multiplying fractions, it's still good practice to try, but if you're struggling with that and simplifying, if you take... If you go to your Desmos calculator, which you should use today, and you, I know this is adding, but let's say you were multiplying. If you're multiplying these two fractions together and you got this decimal answer, if you click, okay, that's because it's in white. <laughs> if you click this button, it'll turn it immediately to a fraction in the simplest form, which is really, really nice. And I did not know it did that. So I suggest you use that. All right. So there are two different compound um, probability events. One's independent and one's dependent. So independent means with replacement. So for example, if you are doing two different events and you're drawing cards from a deck and you draw a card and then you put it back, that's an independent event. Okay, so like the number in the deck is not changing. So for example, a drawer contains three red paper clips, four green paper clips, and five blue paper clips. One paper clip is taken from the drawer and then replaced. Another paper clip is taken from the drawer. What is the probability that the first paper clip is red and, so here's a, there's that word and, the second paper clip is blue? So the first thing we should do is calculate the total number of paper clips. Okay, so I'm going to add three plus four, which is seven, plus five, which is twelve. So there are 12 total paper clips, and that's really important to know. So we need to figure out the first probability that the first paper clip is red. So the probability that the first paper clip is red is 3 out of 12. And we can simplify this later. Okay. Then the probability that the second paper clip is blue is 5 out of 12. And because this is and, I'm going to multiply my answers together. So that gives me 15 out of 144, and then I need to simplify that, and I can simplify both by 3. So 144 divided by 3 is 48. <clears throat> so it gives me 5 out of 48 options. And I want to turn that into a fraction. Sorry, I want to turn that into a percent. So 5 divided by 48 times 100 is 10.4%. Okay, so the percentage that I would pick a red paper clip and then a blue paper clip is 10.4%. So that's an independent event. Dependent is without replacement. So for example, if you draw a card and you don't put it back before you draw the second card. All right, so this is going to be changing the number of things I have. So if I take the same scenario, but this time if we read it, drawer contains three red paper clips, four green paper clips, and five blue paper clips. One paper clip is taken from the drawer and not replaced. It's not put back. And then another paper clip is taken. What's the probability the first is red and the second is blue? So we're asking the same probability question, but this time we are not replacing the paper clip. So we're still going to write the total. So right now, the total is 12, just like last time. Nothing changed. Okay, and when I first take out that red paper clip, there is 12 paper clips in there. So my probability for red also hasn't changed. 3 out of 12. Okay, now I have to think about what is my probability of blue. So I've taken out a red paper clip and I have not put it back. So that changes two things. One, that changes that there are no longer three red paper clips. There are two red paper clips because I have taken one out and not put it back, okay? 
And then that also changes my total. My total is not 12 anymore. I have taken one of those 12 out. So my total is now 11 because I only have 11 paper clips left. So my probability for blue is 5 because there are still 5 blue paper clips out of 11. And I'm going to multiply those together. When I do that and I simplify it, I get 5 out of 44. Okay, so this time we should realize there's going to be a bigger probability because um, there's not as many paper clips this time. And so that as a percentage is 11.4%. Okay, so those are the two differences. One, we replace, one, you don't. You just have to read carefully if it says replaced or not replaced. Okay, and again, independent is replaced, independent is not. You should be taking notes. Let's try a few more examples. So using the two spinners, find each compound probability. So what's the probability of a B and three? Okay, so this one's just a little bit different than what we've been doing because we're talking about different spinners. Also, in a spinner, I can't take one out. Like, that's not how it works. So we're dealing with independent probability. So what's the probability of getting a B? We're going to start there. So if I look here and I roll or spin this spinner, the probability of me getting a B is 1 out of 4. There is one B and there are four options. Okay. Then if I look here, the probability of me roll, spinning a 3, there's 1, 3, out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 1 out of 6. And because it says and, I need to multiply together. So when I multiply those, I get 1 out of 24. And I want you to write everything as a fraction and a percent, which should be really easy in the calculator. So 1 out of 24 times 100 is 4.2%. So there's not a very big probability that you would um, do both a B and a 3. All right. So a box contains three red marbles, six blue marbles, and one white marble. The marbles are selected at random, one at a time, and are not replaced find each compound probability. So not replace. So that means this is a dependent event, which means every time I change it, like take one out, I'm taking one out of the total. So what's the probability of getting a red and a white and a blue? Okay, so my total right now is 3 plus 6 is 9 plus 1 is 10. Okay, so my total at this moment is 10. So the probability of getting a red, so we're gonna start with red. I have three red, I'm taking one red out. I have three out of 10 chance of pulling a red. So when I do that, I now have two, you can't really see that. I now have two red marbles, six blue marbles and one white marbles. So my total now has gone down to nine. So my next probability is white. So that would be one out of nine, okay? So then, just like before, this one white one becomes zero white, and my total goes down even more to eight. So my last probability of getting a blue is six out of eight, okay? And then because this is all and, I'm gonna multiply straight across. Three times one times six is 18 over 10 times 9 times 8. 720. Okay, let's see if we can simplify that by using the button here. <clears throat> Sorry, this is now not working for some reason. <laughs> All right, so I can simplify that to 1 out of 40. So there's a 1 in 40 chance of this happening. And if I turn that into a um, percent, I get 2.5%. So 
very, very small percentage of getting a red and a white and a blue. Okay, this one's not on here, but I want to do one more with you so that you understand something. So let's say this says the probability of getting a red and a red. Okay, so I want two reds. So the first, so again, our total is 12, 10, sorry. Our total is 10. And the first probability of getting a red is 3 out of 10. Because I have 3 reds and 10 total. So now my reds become 2 reds. I only have 2 reds. And my total becomes 9. So my probability of getting another red is 2 out of 9. And I'm going to multiply those together to get 6 out of 90 which is three out of, no, two out of 30, which is one out of 15. Okay, and then I would turn that into a percent. Oh my, one out of 15 would be 6.7%. Okay, always be changing the totals if you're, t if you're not replacing them. All right, that is the end of my lesson. If you have any questions, please ask while you are working on the worksheet. Thank you.